Good afternoon. Uh, good day out there today. I thought the weather was great. Uh, I thought the, uh, well, the players did a good job. Another really enthusiastic, high-tempo practice. No pads on, so no contact, but the guys running to the football. And I thought we were a little bit cleaner today than we were uh, on the first day, which was good because we, we put another big install in. And uh, one other thing, I guess, before I open up for questions, I had a, a nice opportunity. I, I get one more opportunity, I should say, to uh, to wish Vivian and the girls good luck tonight. And then we're pumped up for them and, and hoping that they can advance again in the women's NIT. Questions? Your, what will change from the first two days to Saturday? You know, pads, what, what, what will be different? What will we see this? Well, I think the uh, the team periods will be shorter, and there'll be more of them. Uh, we've we've kind of done two big team periods, one run emphasis, one pass emphasis. The first uh, couple of days here, you know, we'll we'll move around a little bit more within the practice. Uh, you know, there'll be contact. I mean, that that certainly will uh, will be different, and I think we'll have an opportunity maybe to do more with the linemen together. You know, right now we're doing some pass rush things, but. You know, with the pads on now, we can we can start doing some run drills, some combination drills, some half line run drills. So th those things, are, I think, will will really help start to advance some of our younger players. I know you seem to on the first couple days. I know it's early. It's it's very early, and I, I almost want to hold off commenting on a, on any of them maybe until after Saturday. But uh, but I think in terms of I'll comment maybe just on on his demeanor in the huddle. I thought he's done a good job running the team so far. Overall, their, your assessment of them today, did they, uh, were they more accurate or did they, their quarterbacks improved you know, the I, other day? I, it was interesting. I, you know, I, don't, I should have brought it down with me. I don't have the, uh, the charting from, from Tuesday's practice, but it was different when I saw it than what it was on the field. Now, today on the field, it looked cleaner. So Now, I didn't think it was very clean at all on Tuesday, so I wouldn't have had to improve much for it to look cleaner today. Um, but uh, I'm anxious to go in and look at the film and, and see that. My first impression is that, yes, it was, but I, until I get the numbers of everything, I don't watch it. I don't just watch them. Now, what kind of environment are you hoping to have Saturday with lots of fans and recruits and stuff like that? I think it's going to be a great environment. I think it's it's an enjoyable thing for for our team. You know, when the fans come out and their fam families are always welcome. We have some family members who who come almost on a daily basis, but not the numbers that we have on the weekends. And usually, the weekends in general, the, the families bring a, a little bit of a di different atmosphere to practice. Having the fans here as well, I think is going to create just a little bit more energy. I think the players look forward to it. Uh, two guys. What I'm going to do is I'll give an updated injury report every Monday, and then we'll get. I haven't. I don't. I don't know yet what his prognosis will be, but I think uh, we'll address all those things on Mondays. Okay. Devin Carter, I know it's a running back situation. What do you see out of him as running back, and how big of a chance is it for him? I think it's a great opportunity for him. You know, with with PJ and and Savon not taking any carries right now, he's getting a, an excellent opportunity. Ultimately. If that's his home or if fullback becomes his home, I'm not sure I'm ready to say that just yet. But I think right now he's got an excellent opportunity. He was a, a really, really quality running back in high school. So it'll be anxious to see him on Saturday with the pads on. He's a little bigger than some of those other guys. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. So what are your thoughts so far on, I guess, your your second defensive line group? I mean, it seems to be probably one of the physically the bigger units that you've had here. I think it's going to be a. It's going to be great to see him with pads on on Saturday. I think to to give him too much credit right now without the pads going on, I've I've been doing this too long. These these unpadded practices for the linemen can be a little bit deceiving. I think we'll find out a little more on Saturday. Well, that that's kind of that might answer my question, but I was going to ask you specifically about JPO and Sebastian, two guys who at least among us created some buzz from the sidelines last year. They're, they're do they look like guys who are anxious to get on the field after not really playing last year? And how much of an opportunity is there for young guys on your D line? Yeah, I think the team is anxious. You know, and the D line, I think there's tremendous opportunity. You'd love to play eight, ten guys if, if you felt like they could all be productive. You could keep them fresh and you can roll them in and roll them out. And, and there's no doubt in terms of motivation, there's nothing better than competition. So I think all those things are positives for us right now, and we'll have a won't be a final evaluation, but we'll have a much better evaluation, I think, after Saturday than we did after the first two. Kyle, obviously Caleb, you know, played with the NFL. How much of a difference does it have him back for next year? I think any time you, you have an opportunity to bring back a player who's been in your program three or four years, and, and you know, guys like Caleb Johnson, guys like Lorenzo Waters, you know, the, they add a, a certain degree of, of experience that is really valuable, really valuable you know, for, for us. You know, looking ahead to the first game on the road on the other side of the country, you know, to have some guys in that locker room who have been in those environments before, I think it's it's always an advantage. Do you 
have to put up with some growing pains with the quarterback situation in the sense that four of them have never taken a snap in a game. And are you seeing that? And Gary obviously has, as he sure. does the rest of them in terms of game experience. Uh, I, I don't know if we will or we won't, but I know right now we are just because of the, the, the limited amount of reps they're getting. And that's kind of what I said on Tuesday, you know, we're going to go in and evaluate the first two practices and decide how we'll line them up on Saturday and, and gauge some of the reps within the team periods maybe a little differently than we did the first two periods. Uh, they'll all get an opportunity on Saturday, but even after that, I think we're going to really have to continue to do that. To, I've always felt that the guy who is the starting quarterback is going to need a significant amount of reps to be ready and to try to minimize whatever that effect could be that you were asking in the question. Um, but we're going to we're certainly going to also give the uh, give the other guys who haven't been in the games an opportunity to show us that they might be the best one. Carl, what do you need to see from the second wave of linebackers? You know, there's three guys that have had a lot of playing time, and then there's guys like Nash and Taylor listed looking to earn some time. I think we just need to see them play within the system and be productive. I, I don't know if it's a, it's any more complicated than that. You know, you know your role in the defense, and then when the opportunities present themselves, you know, make the tackles and, and make the plays. Thanks, Thanks guys.